All right, everyone, thank you for joining us. Welcome to our April 22 monthly webinar for the Project Management Professionals Community of Practice. We're super excited to have you here. We're also excited to have a couple of guest speakers here talking about some very timely topics. Um, so I will get right into it. If you've never been here before, um, this group, uh, hold on one second, sorry, there we go. <clears throat> I apologize. Uh, what the Community of Practice is, uh, we are concerned with elevating the level of project management expertise within the SUNY community. Um, we used to exist on the workplace by Facebook platform, but with the sunsetting of that platform, now we have a SUNY PM listserv and a couple different web pages. Um, I will actually stick those web pages for you in the chat um, after I'm done with my part of the presentation in case you want to take a look at it. Uh, but what we are looking to do, like I said, is elevate that level of project management expertise. Um, and we understand that in SUNY, not everybody has the title of a project manager, but almost every single one of us has some project management, whether we're doing it personally or in our job. So we're really concerned of helping those people uh, versus necessarily the people that are, are certified project managers, although we do do some stuff with that as well. Um, we do a lot of fostering of discussion and sharing. Uh, we have these monthly webinar topics out there, um, and we do record them all. They are available in the CPD's YouTube page, um, and I'll link to those for you so you can take a look at them. Um, we also do discussion posts through our web, our listserv. So if you have a question, you want to get some expertise from other people in SUNY, feel free to put that out there. Uh, we do polls at times, and we also are very big on different training opportunities, which is how this webinar came about. I'm always looking for free and low cost and SUNY-centered training opportunities for people that are looking for more training in project management. So who are your moderators? Well, that would be me. I'm a program coordinator uh, concerning technical programs. My information is there if you wanna connect with me. Uh, and these slides will be sent out after the presentation to our listserv and posted on our website. Um, so you can use those links live to actually connect with me. Um, but the other person that is our moderator and what I call our subject matter, matter expert, SME, is Krista Glassman. Krista, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey everyone, I'm Krista Glassman. Chris and I have worked several years together uh, managing this uh, community practice, it's beginning to have quite a bit of impact and we're about that. What we are looking for most is to do what Chris had said, that's to foster discussion among us like-minded people. And the people within SUNY who are responsible for uh, managing and uh, completing projects to further uh, SUNY and its systems and its uh, changes across the uh, entire enterprise. So amongst all of us, we've got a multitude of projects that are always in need. And we'd like to have community practice a way for us to leverage each other's expertise and learn from each other as we go along. I'm also one of the instructors for the Project Management Fundamentals class, which we run multiple times per year, and that's a two-day class that teaches the basics of project management. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this, this webinar today, and thank you for putting it together. Yeah, wonderful. So without further ado, we have Scott uh, from Crucial Learning, as well as Nancy, plus we have Carolyn Matiski from the SUNY Sale Institute, and I am going to turn it over to them. You're on mute still, Carolyn. Okay, now I can unmute. <laughs> I was like, oh, my privilege of, uh, you know, unmuting myself went away. Um, but thank you, Chris, for the invitation to today's uh, Community of Practice event. And I know my uh, partner, SUNY's uh, account representatives from Crucial Learning, are delighted to also be able to share the message about the power of uh, Crucial Conversations and all of the curriculum and content that's available to you. Uh, as Part of my role, uh, I'm the director of the Strategic Academic and Innovative Leadership Institute, the SAIL Institute. Uh, I have been using these uh, programs in, as part of the curriculum for our leaders 
for, I don't know, four or five years now. Uh, and so it's been a privilege and an honor to work with Nancy Lacasio and Scott Robley. He's a master trainer uh, for Crucial Learning. Um, Nancy is fantastic because she will really get to the heart of what our learners need to know. Uh, so she was eager to hear about your needs as project managers. And so I know that Scott is going to be uh, ready to share some very practical skills and things that you can put into practice right away uh, from the full length Crucial Conversations course. So my goal here is to just say hello and connect the dots between Crucial Learning and your community of practice and really uh, make this wonderful content available to even more people across the SUNY system. So we've got some great creative problem solvers, Chris and Nancy, to be able to help us figure all of that out, to be able to reach you and get you the skills that will really help you excel in your project management um, initiatives. Uh, we've used uh, applied learning projects as part of our sale programming. And so the crucial conversations part really helps our, um, our leaders be able to get through uh, some of those difficult conversations where they're stuck. And so I think that maybe that, that word stuck is a nice little cue for Scott uh, that, that has some meaning in the content. And so hopefully that's uh, cued you up here, Scott. Welcome and welcome, Nancy. Carolyn, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. I'm so excited Scott's here too. Um, and I just always have to start with thank you. Thank you so much for having us and then also just being a wonderful partner. Um, Carolyn's 100% right from the very start when she and I first started working together it was together we thought about what can we do with the skills and principles that we teach here at Crucial Learning to make a difference in everyone and the whole campus-wide system of SUNY? And so just the, just being invited to, to meet with your group today was such an honor and a privilege of, for us to join. Um, the real star of the show today is obviously our content and delivered by one of my good friends and, and colleagues, uh, Scott Robley. We don't have a ton of people on this call. We have maybe 30 people or so. We do want it to be just an open forum. Ask us questions, send things over in the chat. We want, we're gonna wanna hear from you. I know Scott's gonna be asking some questions and, and um, sharing some of our content, but really this is about you to find out, hey, how can I take the, the skills and principles specifically of Crucial Conversations for Mastering Dialogue and make some of the work that I do professionally and personally better easier, smoother, uh, more impactful. So I hope that you're, you're um, thinking today about, hey, um, what, what about what I'm about to um, hear from Scott is going to uh, help me to really move forward some of the things that I want to do uh, professionally with uh, um, the projects that I'm working on, with the people that I connect with. And then, of course, you're going to hear that our skills and principles have a big impact at home. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I have to have crucial conversations at home, too. So anyway, I could go on and on about how amazing we are, but I'm going to let Scott show you that. So I'm going to turn it over to my good friend, Scott. Take it away. Uh, Nancy, thank you. Carolyn, thank you. Chris, thank you. What a great opportunity it is to be with you. Friends, uh, I love the fact that virtually we can connect from all over the place. It really broadens our ability to do so. But I do miss a lot of the engagement that happens when we're in person, what happens prior to the meetings when we're talking and getting to know each other. And one of the things that I love to be able to do is to find out more about people. So do me a favor really quickly, if you wouldn't mind, in the chat pod, will you let me know where are you joining us from? I'd love to get a quick little glimpse of where is everybody coming to us from in the chat pod uh, go ahead and get your fingers warmed up so I'm gonna ask you to use the uh, the chat pod quite a bit uh, today to kind of have a little more of an interactive experience I'm joining you live from my home office aka unfinished basement uh, in Highland Utah which is, is a little bit south of Salt Lake City if you've ever been out our way it looks like we got people from all over thank you looks like we got Albany and Saratoga Springs uh, uh, great this is a uh, for Donia, I was mentioning to Chris that we're heading out kind of your way uh, here in a, in a month or so. The first week of June, my family is coming out because my 12-year-old is playing in a baseball tournament in Cooperstown. And so we're super excited to be coming out that way to be playing a little baseball up there. Well, thank you wherever you're joining us. Uh, thank you uh, for, for being here. You know, I want to take a quick little minute as we get started here. You know, we at Crucial Learning, you know, just about last year, last August, we did a complete refresh 
complete a complete rebrand. Uh, we once were known as Vital Smarts. Uh, have anyone ever heard of Vital Smarts before? Uh, most people hadn't. We were like the most popular unknown organization out there. And uh, my own family used to think I sold vitamins or blenders. They didn't even know what we did at Vital Smarts. And, and now we've really rebranded and really kind of helped the world know what we're really about. We're about crucial learning. And just so you know a little about us, we really believe in a world where all human beings can be great at being human. And what we know is that with the right skills, everyone can be, uh, can behave in the ways that are going to make their lives and their families, their organizations, the world better. And we are absolutely driven uh, to help find those crucial skills and to share them with people uh, in ways that make a difference or flexible. Uh, in other words, we just uh, we believe in giving people the power to improve. I love it when people say, Scott, what do you do? nothing much. I just give people the power to improve their lives so they can improve the world. That's it. That's all I do, right? Uh, and I'm really grateful that I got to do it with great people like Nancy and others. And we do so, as was already mentioned, through our world-class content. Um, many of you are familiar with our crucial conversations for mastering dialogue and for accountability, but we've also partnered with some incredible individuals. We partnered a number of years ago with the great David Allen, uh, who wrote the book, Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. Uh, and uh, more recently, we partnered with Charles Duhigg, who wrote the New York Times bestselling book, The Power of Habit. And of course, we have our one of our flagship influencer offerings. And so we have multiple ways in which we can help people with the right crucial skills to improve their lives. But we're here today to talk a little bit about Crucial Conversations. Now, I'm just kind of curious, uh, how many of you have read Crucial Conversations? You can use your uh, emojis and give me a thumbs up. You can give me a yes in the chat pod. Um, I'm just kind of curious. It looks like a couple of you have read Crucial Conversations. How many of you have heard of Crucial Conversations? Get, maybe you can get a few more hands up. Okay. How many of you have read a book? I'm just, I'm just trying to give everyone a chance to feel included, right? Yeah, well, what we're about to share with you today comes from uh, this New York Times bestselling book, Crucial Conversations, and we just surpassed 5 million copies sold. And we just recently released our latest and newest edition where we've added my good friend and one I report to, Miss Emily Gregory, is one of our authors, and it's fantastic. And we this, this has been around for decades, and we have learned a lot over the years. And one of the greatest takeaways that we've learned through 30 plus years of studying behavioral science and watching and studying the best uh, and how, what separates them from the rest is that there are certain moments, we'll call them crucial moments, that have disproportionate influence. Meaning that if you can navigate those moments, then they'll have a greater impact on the results that you seek uh, in your life, right? And as a matter of fact, let me share. Look, I love it, Carolyn's. I've got, I got my own little Vanna White. Thank you here, like there showing up my 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 displays. I love it, Carolyn. Thank you so much. Always nice to have some of those people in the background. And uh, what I would like to start off with is kind of highlighting what I mean by these crucial moments, because maybe you can relate to a situation like this one. And so I'm going to show you a situation. And as you watch this exchange between Anna or Anna, however you want to say it, uh, who has been asked to lead a project. And she is meeting with her manager, Kim, to discuss the, the timeline and the project layout and the process and all the things you're going to do. I just want you to think about your world. And I so appreciated uh, that setup and thinking about your reality and how things relate to you. I just want you to uh, kind of ask yourself, do you feel skilled at handling a moment like this one? Let's take a look. So I am really excited to have you and your team digging on this project. Well, thanks. We're excited too. Let's talk timelines. Yes. So we looked it over and we think we can get everything done in just a little over six months. Okay. When I worked it out, it seemed like we should be able to finish this by the end of the quarter. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I'm glad you brought that up because that's like half the usual time for a project like this. Yeah, but that's why you're in this role. You have an ability to make the impossible happen. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we went over all of the individual tasks and there is no way to get that done in three months. Okay, let me give you some more context here. Other product launches are at stake. 
I've already said we can do it by then, and the accelerated schedules are in the master plan. Wait, so you've already made a commitment to the leadership team without consulting me about whether this is feasible? You know we need a big win this year, and there's a lot of pressure on us. Look, when I went to bat for you to get this position, do you know what I said? I said you're the best person for this job. I said you could get things done in tight timelines. Okay, let me first answer a question that might be going through some of your heads. No, Crucial Learning did not do a documentary of your world. It just happens to feel that way, right? Many of you are probably looking at this going, oh, this is real. You ever feel like Anna uh, as you're dealing with the projects and the timelines, right? Think about the impact of this moment. How skilled are you at handling these kinds of situations? Friends, this is the kind of moment we're talking about. This is what we call a crucial moment. Right now, Anya has an opportunity for a crucial conversation, right? A crucial conversation. And what makes a conversation crucial is three elements, right? Stakes are high. Were there high stakes for Anya and Kim? Absolutely, right? Deadlines, stakeholders, absolutely, right? Where they're opposing opinions, for sure, right? In terms of how they're going to be able to handle this project. And when you add to high stakes and opposing opinions, strong emotions, friends, we now have a crucial moment. We have a crucial conversation. And how we step up to that moment is going to de determine not only the results that we seek and the desired outcomes we're trying to accomplish, but also the relationships in which we work, right? How, how Anya handles this with Kim will not only impact the project itself, but it's going to impact the relationship that she has moving forward with her manager, Kim, and how they're going to deal with projects and these kinds of circumstances in the future. Now, typically, when we're confronted with these kinds of situations, we have a very common response. And I, what I'd like to do is share with you probably the most um, common of responses. Now, we're going to give Anya a chance now to respond. We've seen the situation, the tight timelines, the commitments that have already been made. As you watch this approach, I want you to be prepared to share in the chat pod what would you call her approach right how would you label this as you think as you kind of you know describe the approach that she's taking and what do you think will be the outcome of this very common approach i said you're the best person for this job i said you could get things done in tight timelines and i can but but what uh, my team has already spread so thin. I mean, we've we've tried cutting everything out already. There's just, there aren't enough hours in the day, Kim. Are you saying this isn't a priority for you? Well, no, I mean, we'll do whatever it takes. Thanks, Anya. I knew I could count on you. Oh, one more thing. I need to take Sanji off your team and move him to a different project. It just keeps getting more real and more real and more real. Friends, I'm I'm curious. In the chat pod, what would you call Anya's approach? What did she do? How would you label this very, very common way in which we respond to this kind of a crucial moment? Give me some thoughts in the chat pod. I'd love to get a couple of ideas if we could from you. What would you call her approach? What did she do when she's confronted with this crucial moment? And again, this is very common. Thank you, Tanya. Great word. I love it. Others? Yeah, Maureen, I think that's another great way of looking at it. Uh, yeah, I think we, backing down, that's a very nice way of saying it, but I think you may be a little more accurate in your second word, Maureen. Uh, there's some caving. Uh, I, sometimes I, I use the word surrender, right? We, we give up. We give in, right? Again, is that what she really thinks? And again, one of the things we've learned and one of the things you probably have learned as well is that we teach people how to treat us. By not speaking up, by not saying anything in this moment, what is she then doing to her manager, Kim? Giving her permission to what? Do it again. You see, one of the challenges and one of the biggest problems that we have with these kinds of moments is when it matters most, we often do our worst. 
We either don't hold the conversation, which is not good, or we don't hold them well. Do you ever feel that way, friends? Do you ever feel like the more it matters, the worse you get? Uh, and so the solution really is learning how to identify how to hold conversations that are really key to organizational team and interpersonal success. I tell people all the time, our, this course is not a course on communication. It's not a course on conversation. It's a course on results, right? Because where do results come from? Results come from actions. What we do leads to the results that we get. Where do actions come from? They come from decisions. We make decisions. They, they go to action. They lead to results. And where do decisions come from? They come from information, right? We gather information, leads to decisions, put them into action, get results. Well, you tell me how important is com communication in that, in that process, right? Pun intended, it's crucial. I mean, imagine if, if pe not everyone's feeling safe to contribute their ideas in the information gathering phase. We're not always going to have the best information, which may not lead to the best of decisions. But even if with a limited uh, understanding, we do make a good decision and we put it into practice, but right away recognize it is not going to yield the results that we want. But nobody says anything. And now we're what? Down the road months, even years before we actually see the true impact of those decisions and actions. Friends, we have got to learn how to step up and speak up in these kinds of a moments. How do we handle these, these types of situations? And that's really what Crucial Conversations is all about. If you were to look at our model, and I really want you to focus there in the middle of the model, this is what we call the pool of shared meaning. I often refer to it as the group IQ. This is where all that intelligence lives that helps us make better decisions, to get better actions, to get better decisions. And the goal of Crucial Conversations isn't just for me to share my meaning, to get my relevancy and information into the pool, but to get others to do the same. Right? We live in a world right now where we're, we're focused rightfully so on diversity and equity and inclusion. Friends, that is where it lives. It's not enough to just get the right representation around the table, which is important and it's a place to start. But if they're not contributing, if they're not sharing their insights and their background, we're limiting ourselves. We have a limited pool of meaning. And one of the greatest barriers to that full pool of meaning is safety. How do we create the right kind of safety for people to be able to share their opinions, to push back, to challenge, to, uh, uh, to share? That's what this course is really all about. And it really is designed on what we do beforehand. How do we make sure that we are bringing our very best selves to the conversation? How do we initiate the conversation in such a way that not only gives people our meaning and makes it safe for them to share theirs, but to get them to reciprocate in kind and to recognize when they are retreating from dialogue. Friends, this is about dialogue. If there was one word that I, if I could wave a magic wand and change one word in an organization, I would get rid of the word talk. I mean, think about when someone says, hey, can we talk? <laughs> First of all, that kind of sends us into a state of panic because what does that mean? Especially now it's a little more formal in a, in a digital space. But what does that really mean when someone says, can we talk? It means I want to say something and I want you to listen, right? That's, that's us talking. We want dialogue, right? The goal of me sharing is to do so in such a way that you will reciprocate in kind. And how do we do that? How do we create that kind of a, of a space? Well, I don't have a, a lot of time where I can share with you all of our things, but I would like to give you a couple of tips that I think can help you as you begin your own Crucial Conversations journey, as you begin to try to help bring about the kind of safety, the kind of dialogue that will help you get the results that you want, but also strengthen relationships along the way. So the two tips that I want to share with you today, number one is tip number one is don't believe either or. And the second tip is to start with heart. So let's start with this very first tip, this idea of don't believe either or. One of the things that Joseph Grinney, one of our authors and founders always says is that the health of a relationship, a team or an organization is a function of the average time lag between when we identify a problem and when we discuss a problem. I mean, think about in your world, the stronger the relationships, the quicker we are to speak up to concerns, right? But if there isn't a strong relationship, if it's not healthy, we tend to retreat or we, we step up them in, in unaffected ways. 
And so there, there are a lot of reasons why we don't, and we know we need to. This is not newsflash. You're not going, really? I'm supposed to speak to my issues? I had no idea. No, we know that we need to address these kinds of moments, but we don't know how. And there are things that are keeping us from doing so. Let me share with you in a fun way, one of the fundamental reasons why even though we know we don't step up to these kinds of moments. We're going to do so with the help of a very young social scientist named Kiara. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to learn some things about uh, th through this fun experiment with children. And as you watch this experiment, I want you to think about why is it that the children behave the way that they do? And more importantly, what does it teach us about ourselves as adults. Let's watch and be prepared to share your thoughts in the chat box. We all know adults stink at talking about tough things, but how about little kids? Here's my experiment. Feed kids wretched brownies, then See if they'll tell you the truth, especially when they think it might hurt your feelings. First, I made the brownies. Lots of chocolate, eggs, flour, but instead of just sugar, I added in salt. Lots of salt. There's no way they can like these better. Then, I invited kids of various ages for a taste test. I told them I want to compare ordinary brownies to my special brownies, my dear grandmother's special recipe, my dear dead grandmother's special recipe. I gave them some cash for being such a big help. Okay, here it goes. First, they ate the yummy sugar brownies. Next, they ate the salt bricks. Watch this girl. She can barely choke it down. And how about this girl? Even this kid. Look at that face. And now for the crucial moment. Will they tell me the truth and possibly offend me? I asked them to point to the brownies they like best. No surprise that some try to spare my feelings. But watch, even the one who gagged. And how about really little kids? Yep, wow. But do you wanna know what they really thought? Here guys, I have leftovers. Does anybody want seconds? Oh, I never get tired of watching that video. Friends, and uh, as you think about it, why did they do that? Give me some thoughts in the chat. Why did the children not tell the truth? Why did they choose those salt brick brownies that obviously did not taste better um, as opposed to the delicious brownies? What do you think, friends? Give it to me in chat pod. Why did they not tell the truth? Ah, uh, Maureen, I think you're onto something, absolutely. Ah, and, and Marie, I think you're also onto something, right? As you begin to think about where this comes from, and, and we are, we have this almost natural innate instinct to please. We want to avoid conflict, right? There's compassion. I love that word, Maria. Absolutely. And, and they've been taught, right? They didn't want to hurt their feelings. Now, there are other factors. They were given money. It was an experiment. We, we know there are probably some other contributing factors. But I think what you've all identified is one of the fundamental things that happens to us that we that we we learn very early in our lives. We adopt what I like to call an either or mentality, right? We we say either I can be candid and tell the truth or I cannot say anything and spare their feelings, right? We literally become blinded to the ability to do both. We make an either or decision. Either I can be candid, but not kind. I can be respectful, but not honest. We don't realize that it's possible to do both. 
we, we very early on, we kind of make what I call a damnable conclusion, this either or mentality. And so one of the very first things to help us navigate our own ability to step up to these crucial conversations is to overcome the either or. Don't believe, don't buy into the either or mentality. Now, as some of you already kind of alluded to in the chat pod, it's a little bit more than just a mindset. It's also a little bit biological, right? Because we know that when we step up to these moments, adrenaline kicks in and when adrenaline kicks in adrenaline shuts off the prefrontal cortex of our brain that logical decision-making part of our brain and triggers the amygdala what's known as the reptilian brain that is designed for two things only what are they friends give it to me in the chat pod who's the first one that reptilian brain is designed for only two things what are they there it is absolutely fight or flight right that's it now, here's the thing. The good news about that is when we are confronted with a situation like Anya and Kim, our reflexes, <laughs> lightning fast. Uh, but our ability to communicate, <laughs> non-existent. It's just not. You ever have those moments where you walk away from someone thinking, oh, I was so stupid. Well, yeah, guess what? In that moment, you were. You were your ability to communicate was just not there. So part of this process is learning how to recognize, how to overcome those emotions so that we can step up and have crucial conversations that are uh, keeping us from getting the results that we seek. So tip number one is to don't believe the either or. Let's let's change our mindset. Let's Let's be open to the idea that yes, I can be candid and kind. I can be respectful and honest. That's the first tip that I have for you. Let's let's not buy into the either or mentality that we've kind of adopted fundamentally from a very, very early age. Now, tip number two is a little bit more skill based. Now, tip number two is this idea of starting with heart, how we begin to step up and approach uh, these kinds of conversations. Now, one of the things that you'll probably remember whenever you have these kind of conversations is there's typically two conversations going on at the same time. There's the one that you're having with your manager, like Anya was having with Kim. And there's also that other conversation that's going on in your head. You ever have those two conversations competing with each other? Well, let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I'm going to let Lonzo kind of demonstrate this. We're going to watch as he tries to have these two conversations simultaneously. Now, again, one is with his manager and the other is with himself. And I just want you to think about how do these inner thoughts, how does this other conversation inside our head impact the conversation itself and potentially the ongoing relationship. Let's let's take a look. So, uh, we're going to be able to get this done, right? Of course, absolutely. It's not going to happen. But she thinks that I think that it's going to happen, and I'm going to keep it that way. Hmm. I know I had mentioned the 18th. I'm wondering if we could get it done a little earlier, maybe the 16th? Uh, yeah, I don't have any concerns with that. Not true. Big concerns. Right. I wonder how design would feel about helping us out. They've got time, right? I'm sure they can make time. They love pressure. They thrive on it. I've heard a lot of good things from them about pressure. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna hate me. I won't be invited to Taco Tuesday, like, ever. <sighs> oh, boy. So, what are your needs in terms of budget? Budget? You know what? We'll figure it out. I know how important this is. Great. It is really great to be able to work so collaboratively with you on this. Collaboration? You tell me what to do, I do it. I totally agree. It's so refreshing to have a manager I can really talk to. Thanks. Really, thanks. You know, I'm just thinking out loud here. What if we changed the scope just a little and brought back the feature set we cut last year? 
That would be amazing. What? Are you out of your mind? That would be crazy. Amazing. <laughs> crazy amazing. I know. Well, if anything else, you now have a true under working definition of what collaboration really is, right? The idea of collaboration. Friends, really quickly in the chat pod, share with me, what do you think is going to be the impact of this inner thought, this inner conversation that Lonzo was having? What do you, what was your takeaway? How is that the conversation inside his head going to impact the project? The, the relationship, the manager. Ooh, Krista, very good word. Yes, probably moving forward. And, and a lot of that resent is coming from the fact that he's not sharing the concerns that he has. Oh, lots of stress. No doubt about that, Andrea. I love, yeah. Morale, project delays. Man, you are, man, it's almost like you're familiar with the potential outcomes that can happen from these kinds of inner conversations that we have, right? There's no doubt that that conversation that's inside our head, that is not being manifest in an effective way is going to have an impact. Because here's the point. The point is that if you don't talk it out, you will act it out. Think about that for a minute, right? None of us is good enough actor to completely hide our self-talk. Eventually, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, what we're wanting is going to impact. It's going to manifest itself, right? Yes, Chris. Yes, I think you might be a prophetess there. That might be something that we're going to see coming, coming forward, right? And so one of the things we want to talk about is how do we step up these kind of conversations? And so I want you to think, do me a favor. I want you to think about a recent conversation that you've had that went poorly. Okay. For if you're like me, this probably won't be hard. I'll have to think which one. Okay. But I want you to think about a recent conversation that went, maybe it was something where you got upset in that conversation, or maybe you gave in at the end. You, you, you pulled an onion, and just surrendered, waved the white flag, or maybe you posted something in anger, maybe sent that snarky, snippy text, whatever. Okay. As you think about that moment, right? In that moment, be honest in the chat pod, share with me. What was your intent in that moment? What was your goal? What was your motivation when you said or did that? When you think about that moment, right? In that moment, what did you really want? What was your motive? What was your intention? Give it to me. I'd love to see kind of, ah, Marie, that, that's, that's usually, mine's a little bit harsher than that. Not, I just want them to, I want to be right, right? My, I want to, that's a, not just like, oh, I want to get my point across. No, I want them to adopt my point. I want the, I want it to be the point, right? My point translations to the point, right? Uh, Aaron, thank you. In that moment, you want them to get what you, what understand what you're feeling. Yes. And sometimes we just surrender. We just, I'm tired of it. I'm just going to get it out, right? I'm just, I'm to get it done and i think that's a really powerful motivation that we often use i want to move on right we don't have time we're living a fast-paced world right oh nice what did you really uh in that moment i'm trying to teach a lesson you must have been thinking about a conversation with a child that's what i'm that may have been for me i i just want my kids to to respect me and i want them to learn thank you as you think about those intentions friends there are two different ways of looking at our intent there's there's unhelpful intentions which we often get to too quickly one of the things that we've learned is when we're confronted with a crucial moment and adrenaline and, and emotions kick in the first thing that breaks down is not our behavior it's our intentions our motives change super quickly we fall into the the unhelpful intentions like many of you in those moments right i want to be right I want to look good, save face, win, punish, blame, prove my point, avoid conflict, be comfortable, control. Those are unhelpful intentions. Those intentions do not drive dialogue, right? They only actually make matters worse. We have to focus on better intentions, intentions of dialogue, right? Finding truth, learning, finding a win-win, producing long-term results, strengthening relationships. Now, as you look at these, this list really quickly, even on a surface level, what do you notice as the, as the difference between these two lists? Give me some thoughts in the chat pod. As you look at these two lists, what do you see as, as differences between these two lists? What stands out? What jumps out? Different between the unhelpful and the intense of dialogue, right? How do you, how do you see them? How do they differentiate the two lists? 
Ooh, great, Maureen. Absolutely. The the one on the intensive intentions of dialogue are much more uh, we and collaboration, whereas the unhelpful intentions are much more individualistic in me. Great, great insight. And and Andreas supporting that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think also if you look at that, it seems like the unhelpful intentions are just kind of quick wins right now, whereas the intensive dialogue may be a little more long term focus. So as we're stepping up, remember, we want to start with heart. And there are two things that we can do to make sure that we're approaching these conversations with the right intent, with the right intent. The first is to focus on what you really want. And the key word is really. Oftentimes when I'm coaching or teaching, training, I ask people, what do you really want? What do you want from the other person? They almost always say, I want them to change. Right? Well, okay, yeah, that's what you want from them. Friends, here's the deal. When we are confronted with these kinds of situations, the first thing we have to do is ask ourselves, what are my actions communicating about my intentions? Right? In other words, am I behaving in ways that are manifesting my true intentions? And if they're not, I need to make sure I'm making some changes. Because again, and this, by the way, really manifests itself when we're dealing with our teenagers. <laughs> How often with our teenagers do we say things like, when you have a problem, come to me. When you make a mistake, I want you to come to talk to us. And then they come to us and what do we do? I can't believe you. And we just jump on it. That, that, that really, that behavior is not manifesting my true intentions, right? So we have to make sure that I'm, I'm checking my behaviors to make sure they're aligned. And then here's the great thing. And you want to write this down because this is one of the greatest takeaways that we teach in this course. When you ask yourself the question, ask yourself, what do I really want for not from. That is the differentiator. What do I want for me, for them, for the relationship, for the organization? That is a huge differentiator. It's much that from focuses on what you want. I want them to change. I want them to do what I'm telling them to do. For focuses on the really want. What is it that I really want? That's the thing we need to focus on. You know, um, I, I'm reminded of a, of a story a number of years. I'm, I'm an educator by trade. I, I taught high school for 20 years, and I had taught in Alaska for a number of years and moved back down to Utah. And one of the families we got really, really close to, matter of fact, still one of my best friends, I taught three of his children. And his oldest graduated from high school and came down to school in Utah. And he was down on a scholarship, great kid, good student. And so we invited him and another former student of mine over to our home for dinner one day, right after their first semester of their freshman year. And uh, they came over and so I asked him, I said, so Matt, tell me, how was, how was your first semester? He says, not good. I said, no, 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 how was it? He says, no, not good. I said, well, give it to me in grade point average. He says, 1.7. I go, I said, that's not, that's awful, right? And not only he lost his scholarship because he didn't maintain his grade point average. And so my first question was, what did you tell your dad? Because imagine, you got to tell your dad, I just lost my scholarship for school. He said this, I'll never forget it. He said, well, when I called to tell him, he said, I'm going to have to call you back. <laughs> now, here is a man who knew the emotions were kicking in, knew how he was about to behave, it was not going to align what he really wants. And so he created a little bit of a space. He created a moment and he was able to then address because what he really wanted is for his son to be able to come to him no matter what the situation and is able to have that conversation with him. Now, ironically, my wife was there, heard that conversation. And now one of her favorite phrases to say to me is, I'm going to have to call you back. And that's usually when we're not even on the phone, right? That's just, she's like, I'm just going to, I'm going to need a minute. Friends, we've got to make sure we're stepping up on focusing on what we really want for and not from. Another key ingredient to this, um, as once we know what we want, that's not enough. It's not enough for us to know what our true motives are. We have to make sure that we are sharing those motives. We have to make sure that once our intent is right, we want to begin the conversation by sharing that intention with the other person to help create the safety to maybe minimize the way they may react and respond. To illustrate this, let me just quickly share an experience I had with my third son a number of years ago. I'm not sure if any of you have ever been through the process of teaching a teenager how to drive. Anyone had that wonderful experience? Yeah, I've had it three times and coming up on a fourth here, not too, too much down the road. 
Well, when our third son, who's now 21 years old, when he was 15 years old learning how to drive, we were living out in North Carolina. Now, I remember this experience very clearly because it was Christmas Day. We as a family had gone to see a movie, one of the Star Wars movies, I believe. And after the movie, my 15-year-old, like typical 15-year-olds learning how to drive, asked, Dad, can I drive home? Now, I thought about it. It's Christmas. There's not a lot of people on the road. This might be, sure, you can drive home. So picture the scene. My 15-year-old at driving. I'm in the passenger seat. Baby brother in the car seat behind him. Mom next to him. And two older brothers in the very, very back of mom's minivan. We've got the whole crew, right? And while we're driving home, my 15-year-old son showed to us it is possible. You can do it. You can make a left-hand turn without signaling. Yeah, you can. You do not have to signal. You can make a left-hand turn without signaling. And he actually demonstrated that ability at an intersection when the light was turning yellow. Now, imagine this scene, right? Here he is, going to make this left-hand turn, right? Well, the oncoming car, seeing the same yellow light, thinks what? I'm going to make this light. Seeing no indication of the oncoming car turning, he decides to floor it as well. Well, Christmas miracle. Brakes were applied. Accident was averted, right? And uh, my son learned some things that day too, some sign language from the other car. And after which my son says, what's their problem? And I had this wonderful conversation where I said, well, their problem would be you. Because you did not indicate that you were turning. They made an assumption and made a decision based upon what they saw. Friends, I've thought back on that experience time and time again, and I believe that many of us, myself included, in our roles are often like my 15-year-old son, and we do not use what I affectionately call our leadership blinker. We do not declare our intentions. We do not let people know what, we're, what we really want, what our intentions are, and people are then left to guess, left to assume. I don't know about you, but in my world, people are terrible guessers. They don't, they assume poorly. Friends, once we know that our, our intentions are right, once we've answered the question, what do we really want for and not from, the next step is to make sure that we share those intentions with others, right? We need to let them know, declare those intentions. You'll be amazed at how just that intention sharing, that statement of intent can actually create a space for they, where they maybe not get defensive. And here's the deal, friends. The goal of crucial conversations isn't necessary to get them to like the message that you have to share but it's to get them to be open to receive it. That's what this is about, creating a space where they can do so. Well, I, I'm very mindful of our time. I've given you just two little tips, a little bit of a taste of what crucial conversations can do. Tip number one, friends, don't believe the either or. Overcome that mindset. We can be candid and kind. We can be respectful and honest. Make sure we're stepping up to those moments and start with heart. Make sure we're focused on what we really want for and not from and use that leadership blinker. Once we're clear in our intentions, share those intentions with other people. Well, I know we just have a little bit of time left and, and Nancy, you're out. welcome to help me out with this as well. I wanted to make sure I save some time for you. What questions do you have? What, you know, in terms of the content, in terms of maybe how we might bring this out into your world. Um, Nancy, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll add some time over to you, but I, I, that's all I have. But I want to just maybe tag team to Nancy and see what questions people might have. Yeah, thank you, Scott, so much. Um, it's amazing. Um, Scott and I have worked together for quite a while, and every time he speaks, I learn something new. This whole for from thing, like, duh, that makes so much sense. And so, I, thank you, Scott, for that. I I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. So, you know, one of the reasons Carolyn invited us here today is because she is a one person a shop over there in terms of delivering crucial conversations to to everyone, and so we got together to think about what are some other ways that we could um, spread the crucial conversations, training and skills, principles, as well as our other content. And that sort of grew into the invitation to join you all today. So thank you so much for having us. But we deliver our training live, like you know, and virtually. So live in person in the way Scott did today, virtually over Zoom. And then we also have our, an on-demand course for crucial conversations training. So I'm just going to add that little fun fact in there. It's like, if you're thinking in your head, hey, how could I get this for myself, for others? I just want to make sure you've kind of um, heard that information around 
how does this training get delivered? So anyway, I want to open it up for questions. I just um, want to add one thing, Nancy, <laughs> just sure. to add on. Um, just to let you know, the SUNY CPD is looking into options to have Crucial Conversations trainings available to SUNY campuses. Uh, more information will be coming out and probably be looking towards the beginning of June for that information out on our websites and email listservs. Yes, Denise, it's open for everybody. Anybody, we actually even open it for people outside of SUNY because the SUNY CPD does support memberships for non-SUNY campuses. So you just uh, need to work through us and be a CPD member. Maureen, you have a question. Uh, more of a comment, I think. I just wanted to say this was really sort of a little eye opener. It's, it's some of the things that like internally, we kind of know this, but it's very true that when you're in that moment, you don't remember all the good stuff that you should do or say. Um, and I'm, I'm an IT person, so I can really see the value of this intent uh, being explained because you know IT, I guess, is shorter on words than a lot of other areas. Um, but if everybody understood the intent, then that would really go a long way with keeping things running smoothly. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think that's great, Chris, that we will probably have this available through CPD because I think it would be super valuable, really. And from a parent perspective, too, I love that. So, <laughs> Maureen, asked I have a question. Right. I'm sorry. Oh. Leland asked a question, and I'm happy. I, I can't, I, what I'll do is I, I'll send a, a handout that has my slides on it that you can have. So, and I'll, I'll get it to you, Carolyn or Chris. I don't know who to send it to, but um, and we can make sure that you can get access to the deck for sure. Yes, I, you can send that directly to me, and okay. I will share that along with the recording. Awesome. You got it. My pleasure. Thanks for asking, Leland. Yeah, and I was just going to add on to what Maureen said. I think that was one of the crucial things for me to learn was around being right. You know, there's sometimes we go into these conversations and we just want to be right, and that's bad intent. It's bad intent. You know, Especially and one when of the you know that we, you are. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're friends, Scott. Um, no, but it's, you know, one of the skills and principles that we teach in Crucial Conversations training is what you work on prior to the conversation. Think, you know, and thinking about why you're having the conversation. This is when Scott was talking about, like, what do I want for me? What do I want for the other person? What do I want for the organization? That's all in before we've even opened up our mouths. And that's where we really get our, our head and our heart right before we start speaking. And what's really interesting is I was listening to this again, and how many times have I heard all of this right over the years, how important it is to develop the habits around this, to recognize the cues in ourselves when we're about to lose our emotions, or when, as Scott's wife says, I'm gonna call you back, right? When do we recognize, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a call you back moment, right, coming on. That's when we know that, hey, we've got to get our emotions in check and get our heart right. So anyway, what respond, other questions do you have for us? I was going to respond to Maria's comment there in the in the chat pod where she says, I would have liked to have seen a video of them refusing the project timeline. Uh, so <laughs> that, that, that this this little session we call a teaser, Maria. So if you want that video, you got to take the course, right? Because we do have other videos that are there where you can see how, because people always say, well, how did you, what do you do? How do you say it right? Well, we got another great video where, where Anya does a step up and speak up, uh, particularly about the relationship and how they work together, not just about about this moment because that's even a more important conversation than just the fact that we're given an unrealistic timeline it's about how they work together so yeah there are lots of videos uh in our in our training so i'm glad i'm glad you i left you wanting a little bit more maria but sorry because i know that's un, not having closure can be frustrating Yeah, that's a great, so there's a great question. So Denise asked the question, what is a good example of sharing your intent for Anya's case as an example? Yeah, so if I was gonna step up to my to my conversation with Kim as my manager, before I address the issues, I might say, some, hey, listen, I want you to know that I'm committed to this project and I want to to accomplish the things that, that, that are before us. But I also wanna make sure that we have a relationship where we can communicate and be open and before as we make decisions. And I'd like to, I'd like to talk with you about a couple 
couple of things that may be getting in the way, right? So again, uh, another, sometimes people may feel challenged and, you know, I get it. You're under, you're under a lot of stress and I, I don't want to minimize the stress that you're under, but I also want to make sure that I'm sharing some of the concerns that I have about this timeline, right? So again, the, again, the purpose, one of the things we often say is intent trumps content. Here's the deal. Here's another writer downer. People rarely get defensive by what you say. They get defensive by why they think you're saying it. And so part of me sharing my intention is to not allow them to misinterpret. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not trying to take over and be the boss or be be dismissive or not wanting. Because there are a couple of times, remember, remember, what are you saying? This is not important to you? Oh, no, no. That is not what I'm saying at all. That's a misunderstanding of my intention. So I want to declare it up front. I said, listen, I want you to know that I'm committed to doing our very best and delivering a high-end project. I'm all, I also recognize that you're under a lot of pressure and a lot of stress with all the stakeholders. I also want to make sure that we're addressing how we work together and some of the concerns that I have. So it's just more about here's what here's my intentions to create that safety up front. Great, great question, Denise. Thank you for asking. Can I add a personal uh, anecdote on this? Like I've used this sharing intent um, as a parent. And it really works well. I mean, you're asking for the workplace example, but on a personal note, with my 12-year-old boy who I have to remind things often, um, I will say, I know you want me to treat you like a mature young man. And so then I will proceed to say what he needs to do. Um, and so that really helps because he, he doesn't want me to nag, right? And keep saying it and saying it, but saying like, I know you want me to treat you like a mature young man. <laughs> Carolyn, my wife says that to me. I don't know. Now I'm, I'm what is, I've got all these things that are coming back to me right now, but great. Thank you for sharing, Carolyn. Also mindful. We have about one minute left. I know people's time is incredibly valuable. Yeah. They want to eat their lunch, Scott. Thank you so much though. This has been great. Um, and I want to thank Chris again for inviting our whole crew uh, to share this. And I just hope that um, you all will uh, have the resources to be able to take advantage of the, the online on-demand course. Um, and I, I look forward to Chris's uh, message later in the spring about how the CPD can offer that out to all of you. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime, you can reach out to me or to Nancy. Uh, and I just want to thank you all again. Yes, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Carolyn. Uh, just a couple little things. Just to let you know, we do have monthly webinars coming up in May and July. Um, so I will post that real quick. Um, information about that will be forthcoming, what we're going to end up doing for those topics and that sort of stuff. If you didn't hear the um, advanced project management workshop, the follow up to our project management fundamentals class has been announced. Um, it is full currently, but if you want to get on the wait list, it is available. Those on the wait list get first priority for registration for our next class, which should be in the fall of 2022. And if you didn't go to the Crucial Learnings website, you really should. They have a wonderful free summer webinar series that I just found out about today and registered for. Some really great topics out there. Uh, definitely take a look at that. Part of our commitment to telling you about free and low cost training opportunities and professional development that you can take advantage of. So without further ado, that is what we've got. All right. Well, thank Thanks you so everybody. much everyone for having us. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.